welcome to Babbel. I'm Rob Simcox, and today I'm going to be chatting with musician and author, part-time actor, Colm Samson Reagan. Hi, Colm. How are we doing? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. How are you, Rob? Yes, I'm very good. Where are we talking to you today from? Oh, I'm at my house in, uh, in Park Clean. Hey, very mm. nice. I assume the weather's similar to me then today, kind of grey and miserable. <laughs> It is. I'm looking straight out the window now, but the, the sun is really shine, trying to shine through those clouds. Um, so it's kind of a grey light, which is, yeah. Might better. be a good day for a walk, though. Yeah, fair. Yeah, better than what I've got here at the moment down in the uh, southeast of uh, England. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> yeah, not so good. Uh, first question then How has the last year or so been affecting your work, especially? Um. Well, you know, when, when, when lockdown kicked in, it was as if there was this great opportunity to, um, to start to get working on all those projects that, uh, you know, that were kind of stacking up. Um, but more time doesn't necessarily mean more productivity. Uh, so the first thing I did was I finished off a story that I wanted to get done. And then I, I was working on a screenplay with a friend of mine. Um, but it was all very bitty. I found it really hard to, to kind of concentrate on, on, on one particular thing as well, because stuff like the launch of the book was coming up yeah. and that was obviously put back because it couldn't be done um, in the way we wanted to do it. Um, all the music plans fell apart as well. Yeah. Um, so it was, it was frustrating is, is how I'd say I put it. And then the feeling that, well, I should be getting a lot more done than I actually am. Um, so it was that kind of, uh, you know, beating myself up for, for not being more productive in a time when there seemed to be lots of time to do yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've found that myself, and I know I've spoken to a lot of people and found that you have all the free time, you think, oh, I should be doing so much with it, and then nothing ends up happening, and then you start feeling terrible about it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that terrible cycle almost, isn't it? Uh well, actually, the first thing I'll be interested to hear from you now would be your journey, basically, in your creative career from where you started in music and then over the, over the creative writing aspects of the years. What was, how has your journey been from start to finish in an overview? Because I imagine there's quite a lot <laughs> put in there. Um, I- when I was uh, as a teenager in in Ireland, I was um, I was I've always been very interested in writing, but I always imagined that writing would be something I'd do in my fifties or sixties. Um, uh, when I imagined writers, I imagined people with you know lots of kind of life experience who have said, "Right, that's it. I'm off to you know." And you think you don't think of a young Hemingway, do you? You think of a kind of a, you know an elderly one. Um, uh so um that was it's always been my kind of impression of writers, uh, which you know is blatantly false. There's plenty of fantastic writers who are, you know, much younger than I am. But um anyway, uh once I, I did some acting um in, in Ireland as a teenager and then but once I started playing music I found it a much um more instantly gratifying way of expressing myself. Um, and of actually uh, getting on with people and meeting people and and creating uh, friendships through music. Um, and I found the people that I encountered in music were a lot more kind of down to earth and easy to get on with than the people I was encountering in theatre. Oh, interesting. Um, so then I I uh, I started. I, I was busking. Um, and I got, uh, I was approached by um, a couple who owned a bar in the Canary Islands and they offered me a job. So I moved from Dublin to the Canary Islands and then I started playing music and that was it. Then I decided, right, if I can't, if I can't make a living with, uh, with, all I should need is my guitar and a pen. That's what I, that's what I decided. <laughs> If I can't make a living without that, then I then I'm not trying hard enough, and that's been kind of my uh, my mantra ever since. 
I think. That. Um, so by closing off, I, you know, it's not a great way of approaching life, I guess, to kind of close off possibilities. But that's was what I was doing. You know, it's like saying, right, if it doesn't involve, if, if it involves me having to, um, two lots of training, then I'm not going to do it. How lazy <laughs> is that? That's terrible. But that's what that was my twenties. Actually, moving on from that one into possibly your own creative process, as we've been talking along, you're the process of other people. For you in particular, do you have a particular process for particular sides of things like your music, your writing, uh, novel writing, and in comparatively the story, uh, the short story writing? Is Do you have different ways of doing a creative or does it all follow a similar line of the process? The, um, the, the novel writing is something which is very peculiar um, to, to itself. When the short story writing I would compare to kind of doing an album or something like that where you've got um, um, short stories are great. I love them because you can uh, you can be in one and then pull yourself out and then pick up another one that you've been working on and, you know, do aspects of that. Or you can be working on something go, you know, this might actually work better in, in this other story. Um, uh, and it's, you don't have to be as purely single minded and um, with the, with the kind of fictional novel, um, you are waist deep in it. And you're you're pushing yourself through, and everything everything feeds into. It. Um, I had, and and the kind of routine of how I I wrote was I'd be out gigging, I'd come back, um, you know, get back in maybe half twelve one o'clock, and I had two in in the novel The Fly Guy. There's two kind of storylines, um, one is a detective and the other is of the writer. Uh, and so if I was on the detective, if I was on the writer's storyline, I had a Chopin um, uh, nocturnes to, to listen to. And the other one was Bach's cello suites, because I found that listening to music with words was, didn't help at all with, with writing. It's very distracting. Um, so I found these, these were two things. So, uh, and it was just like a trigger. So once I turned that music on, it was a trigger for me to kind of get into that place. Then I had treat a kind of a treat system where I, where I had some nice red wine, um, and I would allow myself a, a, another another uh, you know another sip of red wine or a top up or whatever when I'd reached a certain maybe a thousand words or two thousand words. I forget exactly what it was, now. but wine and chocolate was important um, for. Uh, keep me going through that <laughs> and then I do I do probably maybe two hours kind of until about three o'clock or so um, and uh, and then stop so that was um, so all my writing for the novel was done at night really and then when I edited it it was all edited during the day um, oh. editing was much more daytime thing um, with less less wine involved Um <laughs> Uh, and then uh, the short stories were, were a different thing. I've got there's a place in uh, in Tanby, in in, um, in West Wales. Uh, there's a, a hotel that rents kind of bed rooms right on the seafront. So um, I took myself away there a few times for like three four days at a time. Mm. So I had like three uh, three sessions of that. Where, um, where I took myself away and just got a lot of writing done in those couple of days, um, in a really short space of time. And then at home, it, you know, kind of ref refining ideas. Um, mm -hmm. so that, that was a very different thing. The, the, the short stories were like really intense periods of, of writing and then refining afterwards um whereas the novel was very much a, a marathon a non you know a continual kind of thing yeah. and you, 
uh, with the short stories, I found it easier, easy to kind of put down and then come back to after a while. But with the novel, it did feel like you had to keep, you just had to keep going. Yeah, it, it, it wouldn't get done, yeah. you know. Um, so in in those in that way, those, those are quite different um, approaches. Mm. And the uh, the short stories are great because as well you can you can finish your short story without without explaining everything or tying everything up. Or you, a short story mm-hmm. is wonderful. It's like you can a short story could be about me setting up the camera for this uh, for this meeting. That could be the short story, yeah. and, the short, and, the, and the story can end once we press record. Yeah, so it's just a snippet of uh, either a life or uh, something, an event that's going on. Exactly. Basically. Yeah, yeah, and it can, you know, it could be, or it could be, um, you know, uh, everything that's happened in my life up until this point. But, uh, or, or it, <laughs> it, it, you know, it, but depending on how you write it. Mm. Um, but I do like the idea of being able to just put something down and, and leave it there and move on. Whereas with a novel, you can't do that. You've really got to um, work everything through. Everything has to have a consequence. That's, you know, <laughs> that's the thing. I think that um, my love of short stories was the um, was again the, the the thing of after an hour, or half an hour, not very long of reading. You put something down and 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 think, Oof, what just happened? Like looking at yeah. a piece of art for ten minutes or something, and then walking away and thinking, "What just happened there?" There's something there was, you know. Um, yeah. So, our, our listening to amazing song, our seeing a performance live, and then walking away thinking, mm-hmm. "Right, what just happened?" Whereas the novel is a, is a more immersive thing, and when you put the novel down, you expect to have the answers of what just happened. You know what I mean? You, yeah. You, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No, actually, to be fair, I, uh, I was reading, uh, which one was it? A uh, Silk from your uh, short stories the other day. And I was, I, you know, and I was literally did that on my lunch break for a half hour, uh, read through that one. Uh, and it was exactly as, yeah, as you described, it's a moment where you can just have it, you read it and then you come away from it and you do have to pause and think you don't have everything either end of it or it's not all tied up it's just there and yeah mm. i guess it's more of a more of a way to get people to think rather than afterwards like a bit the novel you then go ah, it's all done and he's all tied yeah. up gives you that moment yeah. of just being like ah okay and then, yeah, you have to think a bit more don't you yeah and, then, and that happens um you know if you if you open yourself up to um uh, experiences in in life in terms of encounters with people, mm. um, and that's another thing about kind of doing the doing the musician thing and the travel thing that that involves is the amount of different characters you, you end up encountering, um, and sometimes some of those conversations are not even conversations, just observations of characters. Um, a lot of that feeds into stories for me. I don't know if you're still running the course specifically, or uh, but the the writing for publication course mm. in particular uh, found this one interesting on the basis that it almost admits that you're not necessarily doing uh, your writing for pure creativity. It you're doing it with uh, the idea of knowing your market, uh, wanting people to read it. So is how I assume within that course you do you talk discuss I guess the balance of between expressing your creativity and uh, also writing the work that's going to sell. It's a tough one, um, and it's a, because it's a tough one. It's a, it's an interesting module. It's an interesting course. Um, for instance, when I wrote the Fly Guy, I hmm. what the the advice you're always given is you got to know your genre even before you write it. You got to know your genre. If you want to, if you want to be able to target a, uh, you know, a market after you write it and submit it to publishers, or whatever, and I did, um, and I think that a lot of writers that is not their primary concern when they sit down and write. Mm. Um, uh, so consequently, when, um, uh, when I sent it out, one of the um, 
uh, publishers that I sent it to, because uh, I described it as, I think I was going on about it as element of horror and mystery or something like that. I didn't phrase it very well. And they came back saying, uh, we'll, uh, we, we can angle this as a psychological thriller. I said, great, that, that covers a yeah. whole range of, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so that, that's a great bracket to put it in. Um, uh, and, but, but I hadn't thought of that before I was writing it. I just thought that, uh, this is a cool idea and it, it, it draws me in and kind of scares me. Um, and it's something I want to explore. Um, and again, that's the nice thing about when you're writing short stories is because they don't, they are a genre unto themselves, really. You know, the short story can be, uh, you know, it can be kind of anything. So it is something I have difficulty with myself, and it's also a thing I have difficulty with in terms of um, in terms of the music. Is that when I was trying to uh, get people to represent my music for me, they'd say, "Okay, well, what is it exactly?" And say, "Well, singer songwriter, uh, you know." They go, "Yeah, but you know," and and my because I, I love blues music, I love folk music, but when I think of folk, I think of kind of old school um uh folk stuff um and because i had great difficulty in defining myself i found it very difficult to to get people to represent me because they didn't know how to if i couldn't define myself how could they represent me? right yeah um any if if you decide that i'm going to make an income from my creative output it is something you have to consider and that was the decision i made like i said all i want to do i just if i can't do it with my guitar and my pen um that that was it like that the guitar and the pen that's how i'm going to get money to live my life um and in and so when you decide that that's what you're going to do you're immediately um engaging with the commercial world and then there are things which you have to kind of it, fit into which, yeah. which is very frustrating and yeah. i'm not very good at it um uh, and the and then when it comes to publishing there's the, the the publishing the book publishing world now is very different to how it was even 10 years ago or five years you know it, definitely 10 years ago and then it started this kind of um, trajectory where the the, the bigger publishers um, don't matter as much as they used to. They still do to a certain extent, but the um, when people browse online, they're not looking at whether it's Macmillan or whether it's Penguin or whatever. They're just looking at um, uh, the reviews and what other what it's like you know this if you like this then you might like whatever yeah. you know that's the kind of parameters that people think with it speaking of your music briefly i wanted to go into how the music that you've done yourself do you produce a lot of that yourself do you mainly do writing lyrics and then take it to uh studios and producers to do the help you with the rest of it or do you do that a lot of it yourself no, it's it's the latter. It's um, I'll uh, I'll get the uh, I'll write it, um, get some kind of arrangement together, um, get a really good concept of of what it is. Get other musicians, figure out the other musicians I want involved, what I want them to do, um, and then take it to uh, take it to a producer. I I I've never um, set up a a home studio. Oh, I set up as basic recording, you know what I mean? Just yeah, yeah. demos down. But in terms of um in in terms of getting to that point where I could come up with something finished myself, I've never I've never done it. Um and you know in that probably not the not the wisest way to do things. Um but what it does mean for instance the uh the project I'm working on now is uh, a, a project of it's a collection of folk songs, but they're 
old folk songs, their a cappella folk songs that would, would have been sung in um, the Shano style, which is an Irish style of singing, which is unaccompanied. Um, and so these are songs which, you know, some would date back to, well, the, the, they would date back a long time. There's lots of different versions of them, but they're, they're all, you know, in, uh, there's no copyright on them or anything. They would have been yeah. um, passed down different places, have different variations of them. Yeah. Um, so, for instance, there, there's one which is um, back to the kind of Jacobite revolution times, you know, uh, another one from the English uh, Civil War. And, uh, so they're very, very old melodies, yeah. all in the English language. So I don't have any... Um, don't have any Welsh songs on there yet. Um, uh, but from England, Ireland, Scotland, and uh, and Wales, I'm still looking for a, a song from Wales that I like to do. Um, and so I've, I've, I'm working with a producer in Bristol uh, oh. called Gaz Williams. And so I approached a couple of different producers about this, uh, about this, what I wanted to do. Um, and uh, and Gaz was the one who who immediately kind of clicked. I didn't have to explain too much about what I wanted to do, wow. and the idea of building up arrangements only with voice. That I wanted it to to be quite an immersive experience, but I didn't want it to sound like a choir. I didn't want it to sound like a barbershop. I didn't want it to sound like you know the kind of expected. Uh, yeah. So and all the textures are. Is only, only comes from 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 my voice, yeah. So no other instrumentation, and um, and pulling something like that off myself at home would be super difficult. Um, I think that the when you get to that uh, point of so sorry, Gaz. So what I wanted to say first of all, so Gaz has got some. First of all, he's got a cool studio with lots of great stuff in it that I would never have thought of buying. Um, and, uh, and he's just got a really in-depth knowledge of, um, of how we can, uh, how we can use these tools that he's got to, to still, um, create something that sounds, uh, totally authentic and, um, and doesn't sound like it's, like it's, overproduced yeah you know and and because for me music is a super collaborative experience um mm -hmm. and working with a producer is uh I've, I've always enjoyed i've always enjoyed going into a studio with somebody else there who has got ideas that i might nece not necessarily have thought of or yeah. who says that's good but it's not quite good enough and so forces me to up my game, you know, yeah, yeah. And, and, and that, and that relationship I think is, is really important. Um, I, yeah. So I, in, in, in that sense, um, me setting up the studio at home, for one thing, I don't know if I'd ever actually finish anything because that's another thing about going into studios. You have a finite amount of time. Yeah. You're set. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to get it done. Yeah. Um, uh, whereas if it was at home, I don't know if I'd ever. I'd, and as well, there's so much. Uh, maybe I'm just too lazy to learn it all. You know. I mean, fair, yeah. I mean, uh, there's a lot of unfinished projects, music-wise, that I also have on my. It's a lot of. Oh, that's a great idea. Put it down. Do you? Do you get uh, I do uh, ish, uh, but like I said, I mean, a lot of them are unfinished on the basis that I've, I mean, I basically just need to probably. As you say, collab with people and develop my ideas a little further. That's probably what I need to do as my next step, to be honest. Well, that's one of the hardest things I've found about um about the writing um yeah. process and the novel in particular is is kind of being disciplined enough to to get it to a point um uh you know to, to get it finished and to and to get it to a point where I think, okay. I'm going to have to send this off now. Um, whereas when you're collaborating with someone, you do have somebody else there to 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 tell you to to you know what I mean to say. Well, yeah. listen, I got another project 
in February. So it'd be great if we wrap this one up by, you know, the end of the year or whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, deadline yourself almost. Yeah, yeah. Whereas um, uh, with with writing and then, so uh, then when you enter, when you uh, when you get into the uh, a relationship with a the publisher, then mm. that's the kind of publisher's deal. It is like a producer in a way, in that yeah, yeah. they kind of uh, they kind of set parameters. They'll they'll send stuff back to you, and that's not quite good enough. Um, or uh, I don't believe I don't believe this. Do you really? You know what I mean? This this part of the story falls down a bit, um, and there's a deadline for that I that I need a reply by or whatever. You know. Um, whereas if you're self publishing, there is that uh, thing of maybe thinking, okay, that's good enough, and then releasing it, and then a couple of years later looking back and going, Oof. yeah. But it's out there, and if people have read that one book by you which you self-published or half read it or read the first couple of chapters and put it down mm. the likelihood of them picking up another book by you is very uh very slight yeah. indeed if they've had if they put one down you know yeah fair enough uh yeah oh well i was just going to go on to saying uh what's what's uh next for you for you uh what have you got in the pipelines writing wise because obviously you had the you've got two books out the fly guy and the Tall owl the tall owl. and yeah. the other stories, which is yeah. yeah, as like I said, I've read uh, a few of those. Really nice music wise. You've got a lot. So what's what's on the horizon? Well, there's there's the album with Gaz, um, mm. which I think is the the working title is called Love and the Sea, but that's just the working title. Mm. Um, but we're getting back in the studio soon, um, and so. Hopefully we can work through that pretty quickly. Uh, I'm putting together a, a collection of um, folk stories, so original folk stories, which kind of set up like, um, as as one would imagine, kind of fairy tales, yeah. but take out any princesses um, uh, or magic castles. I don't go for that. But uh, these all kind of folk tales. So I'm I'm working on that, and the idea then, would be that I could release the album and this and this book at the same time, oh, wow. um, which would be nice. I'm working in collaboration as well with uh, storytellers um, from Ireland, Scotland, and Wales, um, and we're we're putting together uh, this idea for kind of a performances that will travel, um, where we'll have storytelling uh, music some acapella folk singing and stuff like that so we're putting together that kind of thing and um uh what else and yeah there's there's a, another a, another novel in the in the pipeline as well but cool but not that that's that's bubbling away um it's actually been bubbling away for a while and i keep finding other things to um other projects that that will that will give me more it's, that'll give gratification sooner. That's the problem with the novel, see, is that it's such a long thing that you go, well, if I do this, so, but but it's there, and I'm going to be I'm going to be working on it. Um, so yeah, that that's it. I mean, that's it. and then once I mean once we can start playing music again, I'm going to be out playing my band. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll be out and about all over the gig place at that yeah. point i imagine so many musicians are gagging to get back out there and just start absolutely. playing again absolutely there's going to be once once the restrictions are lifted um every everybody's going to be everybody's going to be wanting to uh want to just make some noise i had a dream could be nice i had a dream that i was lying underneath the floor tom of uh of one of my drummers that's how much I'm missing this noise. And it was a fun, it was a beautiful dream. I loved it. I didn't want to wake up. I woke up from it and wanted to fall back asleep and get back into it. I was underneath the floor, Tom, and he was hammering it. It was just boom. <laughs> and and just that um vibration yeah. of of in the air around you, mm. people that music around you, it's it's it you know, it, it does affect you at a molecular level. It, yeah, it really the energy moves you in ways. Yeah, you know? feeling uh, you can't really describe, but it's just there, and it's every it's everything in that moment for sure. Yeah, amazing. Well, I would 
We're going to say thank you for joining us today, Colin. It has been absolutely lovely to have you on. Well, well thanks very much, Rob. Uh, you, the Fly Guy and the Tool Hour are both available on various uh, sites, I imagine. Yeah, uh, whatever, wherever you get your books from, you'll be able to, you'll be able to get them. Well, there you go. That's where you can get from music and stuff. You also have your own website, which uh, basically collects all of your various ongoings all into one place, which is yeah. a very useful spot for anyone who's wanting to uh, find out more. Uh, yeah. Thanks again for joining us. Oh, uh, you're welcome. No problem at all. Uh, and thank you, travelers, for listening. Uh, goodbye.